Another day, another story. Daylight saving time, DST, is the practice of moving the clocks forward by one hour during the warmer months of the year to extend evening daylight and reduce the need for artificial lighting. The clocks are typically set forward in the spring and set back again in the fall, allowing for longer daylight in the evening and shorter daylight in the morning. Here's how it works. Welcome to Tabo Eminent Channel Spring, start of DST. Clocks are moved forward by one hour, usually around March or April. This is often referred to as springing forward. Fall, end of DST. Clocks are moved back by one hour, usually around October or November. This is called falling back. The idea behind DST is to make better use of natural daylight during the longer days of spring and summer. This practice was first widely adopted during World War I and II to conserve energy, and it's still used in many countries today, though not everywhere. Some regions do not observe DST at all, such as parts of Asia, Africa, and most of the equatorial countries where daylight hours remain relatively constant throughout the year. The concept of daylight saving time, DST, originated in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. One of the earliest advocates was George Vernon Hudson, an entomologist from New Zealand, who proposed the idea in 1895 to allow more daylight for his insect collecting hobby. However, it was British builder William Willett who more formally pushed the concept in 1907, advocating for lighter evenings through a pamphlet titled The Waste of Daylight. Willett's motivation was to increase productivity and reduce the consumption of artificial lighting. Despite Willett's efforts, DST wasn't widely implemented until World War I. In 1916, Germany became the first country to adopt DST as a way to conserve fuel for the war effort by reducing the need for lighting in the evenings. Soon after, other countries, including Britain and the United States, followed suit. The rationale behind DST has evolved over time. Initially, it was all about energy conservation, especially during times of war and economic hardship. The belief was that more daylight in the evening meant less reliance on electric lighting. Studies have had mixed results regarding energy savings, with some research showing minimal reductions in electricity usage. Another reason often cited for DST is to encourage outdoor activities after work and school during the summer months. Longer daylight hours allow for more time spent outdoors, which can lead to increased physical activity and economic benefits for industries such as retail and tourism. However, DST is not without controversy. Some argue that the disruption to sleep patterns can have negative health effects, including increased risk of heart attacks, strokes, and even traffic accidents, especially when clocks spring forward and people lose an hour of sleep. Others question whether the energy savings still apply in today's world, where modern energy consumption patterns, e.g. air conditioning, have changed. In recent years, there has been growing debate about whether DST should continue. Some regions, such as Hawaii and most of Arizona in the United States, do not observe DST at all. And in Europe, the European Union has been considering abolishing it altogether. In 2019, the EU voted to end the mandatory practice of changing clocks twice a year, allowing each member state to decide whether to remain in permanent summer or winter time. Early Global Adoption and Resistance After Germany first adopted DST in 1916, many countries followed, particularly those in Europe and North America. The United States, for instance, adopted DST during World War I in 1918 to support the war effort by conserving energy. However, it was unpopular with farmers and rural communities, who argued that the shift interfered with their work routines. For farmers whose schedules were tied to sunrise rather than the clock, losing an hour in the morning made chores more difficult, especially in areas where livestock and crops were dependent on precise timing, the Uniform Time Act and modern day. Is by the 1960s, the patchwork nature of DST in the US led to confusion, especially for transportation industries and businesses. In response, the US government passed the Uniform Time Act of 1966, which standardized DST practices across the country. States that wish to adopt DST 
had to follow the federal schedule, but individual states could opt out by passing local laws. This is why, to this day, states like Hawaii and most of Arizona don't observe DST. Debate over health and productivity. The health effects of DST are a hot topic in modern discussions. While proponents argue that more daylight in the evening promotes outdoor activity and reduces the use of artificial lighting, critics point to evidence that shifting the clock disrupts natural sleep rhythms. The change to DST in the spring, when clocks are moved forward, can lead to sleep deprivation, and some studies have found an increase in heart attacks and strokes in the days following the transition. Other research suggests that the time change affects workplace productivity. After the spring shift, people are groggier and more prone to mistakes at work, while traffic accidents also tend to spike. Conversely, the fall change, when the clocks move back, usually results in a brief period of extra sleep, leading to fewer accidents and improved performance in the days that follow. Economic implications. Economically, the impact of DST can vary. Retail and recreation industries generally support DST because longer daylight hours encourage people to shop and engage in leisure activities after work. In contrast, industries that rely on early morning operations, like agriculture, may be negatively affected. Technology has also changed the landscape of DST. With the rise of air conditioning and electronic devices, energy consumption patterns have shifted and the energy savings once associated with DST may no longer be as significant as they were in the past. Modern studies have shown that while DST might reduce electricity use for lighting, it can increase the use of heating and cooling systems, particularly in hot climates, offsetting any gains. Modern push to abolish or reform. DST in recent years, there has been a growing movement to abolish DST or reform how it's implemented. In the European Union, a public survey in 2018 showed that a majority of respondents favored ending the twice yearly clock changes. As a result, the European Parliament voted in 2010 to allow countries to choose between permanent summertime or wintertime, with plans to phase out DST by 2021. In the United States, several states have introduced legislation to make DST permanent meaning they would stay on summertime year-round and stop changing clocks. Florida, for example, passed a bill in 2018 supporting year-round DST, but federal approval is required for such a change. The debate continues with some favoring permanent standard time, winter time, instead. The future of DSTA society continues to weigh the pros and cons of DST. Its future remains uncertain. Many nations and regions are reconsidering whether the benefits of the practice, energy conservation, outdoor activities, and retail gains outweigh the drawbacks of health risks, productivity losses, and disrupted routines. While some countries may move toward abolishing the clock changes altogether, others may choose to keep DST in place for economic or cultural reasons. Daylight saving time, once a wartime measure, has now become a global debate about how we structure our daily lives and adapt to changing energy and lifestyle needs. Whether it continues or fades into history will depend on how societies balance tradition with modern needs. Thanks for watching. Request you to subscribe the channel.